Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to a new day of the Elder Scrolls Arena. We are just one day away from making it to Black Heights. Well, I say one day away, we should arrive there tomorrow, but there is a slight possible chance that when we actually do tomorrow's episode, that will be over, and we'll actually not do anything until Saturday, but whatever. And then, worst case scenario, is Saturday, it's like Saturday night, so which means two days are completely wasted for no reason. <sighs> Love this game. Uh, it's interesting to note, actually, that um, when you fast travel to areas, let's say, for example, it says it will take one day to get there. Okay, so uh, you should arrive there tomorrow. Fair enough. You fast travel, and then you don't arrive there tomorrow, you arrive the next day. If you reload your game and go and do it again, you might. it might also be the next day. But then if you reload it and do it again, it might actually be the day that it said you were going to be. And then also, uh, the time that you arrive differs. And I don't know what the fact, I think it's just random, because sometimes you arrive on the first of Pathfire, and it's 6am. Sometimes you arrive on the first of Pathfire, and it's 7pm. Sometimes you arrive on the second of Pathfire, and it's 12am. Sometimes you arrive on the second of Pathfire, and it's 1am. It's, doesn't, I don't think there's any, like, real thing to it. I think it's just, it's just completely random. Um, but I'm not one to just go back and continuously do it until I get it to a certain date. Um, so, luckily we've been, well, nothing's, nothing's uh, really preventing us from just, you know, let's say it's, uh, like, well, I think the last time I fast travelled, we arrived on, uh, no, the last time I fast travelled, we arrived on Sunday. Uh, which was the shot of a player, which was lucky. The time before that, though, we were supposed to arrive on... I can't remember what day it was, but we arrived the day after and ended up doing an episode of nothingness. Which, in hindsight, I actually should have done a blog. But I didn't. So, anyway. Speaking of blogs, uh, how about a Borderlands 2 loot hunt up, uh, update? Now, I was a bit miffed Tuesday, um... The you had to kill Grendel, which is a a, a guy, a, a character from the Captain Scarlet's Pirate Booty, and unfortunately I wasn't strong enough to actually beat to get far enough through the DLC to actually do it, and I never actually got the Grendel, the, not the Grendel. What was the weapon? The little Eevee. I never actually got that gun. Really upset about that. But good news is this, uh, not this yesterday's. Um, uh, target was Mad Mike, who uh, most players of Borland should know. Uh, he appears in the Bloodshot Stronghold on your way to go get Roland back. Um, you actually, you don't have to fight him, but you have to encounter him. So, even though he's not like a big a big guy that has his own little like cutscene, like Boom Boom and and Duck Dragon, all those characters. Uh, he is one that you definitely can't miss, uh, unless you're completely ignoring him when the door opens and he comes out, and just walk past him. Uh, the weapon that he gave us was the Madhouse, which is an assault rifle. It's actually a pretty good gun. Um, after that, we had to kill Goliath. Now, Captain Scarlet, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but week one, uh, Moxie was actually the person who presented it. And every day they, they say little things. Week 2 is actually presented by Captain Scarlet. And um, she, she's quite funny because today's target, not today, yesterday's target was Goliaths. We had to kill um, 500,000 Goliaths. Um, and she's like, is it me? Oh, Goliaths is awful. I, I, I can't really do her accent. She's got like a really interesting British accent. The spider cords, the noises they make, the smell, oh, the smell. They smell like burnt cheese. You know that burnt cheese smell? Awful. Kill as many of them as you can with the madhouse. Um, uh, and you'll be a step closer to getting a fastball at the weekend, at week's end. Um, I can't stop but say madhouse. I, I'm pretty sure that's actually how you're supposed to pronounce it, madhouse. Um, but yeah, that is the Borderlands 2 uh, update for today. Now on to a, a topic that I'd like to discuss. Um, Japan. 
Um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a place. Um, there's a lot of people here. There's, um, things and technology, the like. Um, but one thing I don't quite understand, and it was a bit of a culture shock for me when I came here. Well, not, not when I first came here, but I'm starting, it's starting to, like, sink in. It's not something that was, like, abundantly apparent to me when I first started. Japan makes a lot of games. They actually make really good games. In fact, some might say that true consoles... Well, no, it's not really... A, I was going to say consoles or video games in general truly originated in Japan. It's not really accurate. I mean, you've got the Atari and those games. I mean, it didn't really go... Su well, I was, I was also going to say it didn't really go super mainstream until SNES, or well, until NES, but that's also not really true, because the Atari honestly was... And ColecoVision, don't forget ColecoVision. Anyway, what I'm trying to friggin' say in so many friggin' words is that I, well, I like Japanese games a lot, and a lot of people really love Japanese games. Japan produces a lot of really top freaking grade A games. Interesting stories, um, good storytelling, uh, you know, the cutting edge graphics wise in some cases. You know, when we think about it, the PlayStation is Japanese console, uh, the Wii is the Japanese console. Back in the day, Sega had their consoles, the Dreamcast and the Genesis, and you got Super Nintendo. These are good, solid consoles. In fact, the only non-Japanese console that I can think of that has been at all successful since, like, the old days of, like, you know, uh, ColecoVision and... Uh, Atari and all that, the only real console that's really taken off is the Xbox and the Xbox 360. Um, that's it. Like, Xbox, I, correct me if I'm wrong, right? I'll leave a comment if I'm wrong, but I think all other major consoles have been Japanese consoles. They've either been Sega, Nintendo, or Sony. I, and, and, and then Xbox, and Microsoft, of course, make the American one. I don't think I'm, I'm real trying really hard. Even even handhelds, you know, you've got you've got your Nintendo DS, you've got your um your Sony Play uh, PSP or um, the PS Vita. Yeah. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is I am trying to actually make a point. Japan make a lot of good games, right? And in the West, we love it. We love our Metal Gear Solids. We love our well, some of us love our Yakuza's. I friggin' love Yakuza. Um, you know, we love our Okamis. We love our... I'm trying to think of other friggin' Japanese games. But the point I'm trying to make is, and I'm really trying to make a point here, is that they make a lot of games. And people in the West get really hyped and love playing these games. However, in Japan, apparently, nobody plays games. Nobody plays video games, except for, like, kids, like, really young high school kids. Apparently, adults just do not play baseball, uh, they play baseball games, play, um, play video games. I don't quite understand this concept. I mean, in the West, I'm sure America is the same as Australia. Yeah, sure, not everyone plays video games. Some people frown upon video games. If I'm at work and I say, oh, I'm loving this new game, um, some people will go, oh my god, you play video games? What a loser. But, at the same time, a lot of people, my old boss included, um, love video games. He was into, um, he was into his Call of Duty Black Ops's. Uh, he also, he didn't know what Skyrim was, and I, uh, I actually encouraged him to get Skyrim, and the moment, oh no, I lent him my Skyrim, uh, during this small period where I wasn't actually playing Skyrim. And he... Actually, I think I was playing the PlayStation version. <laughs> so I had two versions anyway. And he came back the next day and like, Oh my god. I like... I, I didn't know what it was at first. But the moment I put it in, I didn't turn the console off for like f five hours. And I've just been 
smithing. And I'm like, yep, I did that too. <laughs> I spent the first, like, 10, 15 hours of the game just smithing in in Riverwood. Um, or was it River Run? No, River Run's Game of Thrones. Riverwood is... Yeah, I knew that. Um, so, you know, there's, there's that culture in the West that, you know, it, it, it used to be, like, you know, video gamers especially adult video gamers are a bit frowned upon but these days it's becoming more and more accepted however in japan this is not the case as i found out basically if i were to say in public um i like video games and i play video games even if it wasn't like i love video games and i play them all the time even if it's just you know i i yeah i i got a playstation and i i, I play video games uh, you know every now and again which is not sure I play them quite a bit, although not a lot, because I'm quite busy, but I play them, you know, occasionally. Um, it would be, that would, if I said that, that would basically be social suicide on my part, because people would just be, oh my god, you, you, you play video games? Wow, I'm, a, I'm never talking to you again, or I'm not going to take you seriously ever again, or... Uh, yeah, I'll pretend that I'm friends with you, but secretly we're not going to invite you to any of our parties from now on. It's, it's really like that. It's, I couldn't believe it. Like, I basically don't tell anyone I play video games now. Uh, when, when people, like, when I'm meeting new people and they're like, oh, yeah, you're from Australia, oh, well, that's interesting. Oh, yeah, and what are your hobbies? I'm like, uh, uh, Waifu, what are my hobbies again? <laughs> it's just like, oh, you like, um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I like that stuff. I don't like vi no, video games? No. No, I don't even know what video games are. Unless the person also likes video games, then I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I play video games on occasion. Oh, yeah, I like, oh, yeah, I know that game, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, if they don't, if they're either not into video games, if I know they're not into video games, or I don't know, like, what their disposition is, I would never say that I'm into video games, because, like I said, it's complete social suicide. I, I don't quite get it. I mean, you've got Akihabara, you know, you've got Electric City, which is freaking video game central. You've got those videos of um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle, where in Akihabara they're playing the... They're playing the trailer for the game, and it's introducing new characters, and like the, the the intersection's full of people, and everyone is just losing their shit whenever a new character is introduced. I, I don't get it. And Japan has such a huge game industry. Why is gaming such a taboo thing? I don't understand. But hey, whatever. Um, I'll just continue playing my video games and whatever. I, I guess it's a good thing for me because maybe that's why all those games are like a dollar each. Like Crime Crack. Well, Crime Crackers was two dollars. And then I bought Dynasty Warriors Original for, for one dollar. Uh, um, well, a hundred yen. Um, and it's just because I don't know. They're so frowned upon that if, you, if you're willing to go to a game shop and actually buy games, well we'll give you props, and here, take this game for practically nothing, because you're a cool boy. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Um, but yeah, uh, that's just, that's just one of, it's just a, a weird little culture shock that I've had coming to Japan, and I don't quite understand what it's about and, and how to deal with it, like the, the, the wife's parents, um, the, uh, the parentals in law, they don't quite understand my obsession either, and the, the wife is sort of, she doesn't really acknowledge it, but she accepts it, <laughs> only because I force her to, because if she doesn't like it, well then I, um, I tell her to go back to the closet and put on schoolgirl uniform like you were supposed to, uh, and then dance on the, f <laughs> and then dance in the front room for money. What was that from? Oh, that's Dylan Moran. Yeah, Dylan Moran, a really good comedian. <laughs> And then the spiders come down. The spider... No, no, sorry, sorry. I, I screwed it up. Oh, God, I screwed up the joke. It's supposed to be... And then the cage comes down. The cage with the Japanese fighting spiders. And then my mother tells me to take off my clothes and go dance in the front room for money. 
Uh, if you don't, if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, you should a look up Black Box, which is a really really funny uh, British comedy show, which stars Dylan Moran and Bill Bailey. Um, and then you should go look up both Dylan Moran and Bill Bailey, who are very accomplished stand-up comedians. Uh, I've watched a lot of Bill Bailey stuff. I haven't really seen a lot of uh, Dylan Moran stuff, just because it hasn't really been on. And Avo, Avo and Jack are really good, big fans of Bill Bailey as well. Um, and we every now and again, we throw little Bill Bailey tributes into our videos. What's the biggest one? Um... Oh god. Oh yeah, yeah. Die now. Die now, you smug bastards. That's just one of his little um, uh, routines that Bill Bailey does in most of his shows. Uh, but anyway, I think I've talked enough about things and Japan. And I believe that I have actually made my point, so golf clap for me. But uh, when we come back, we will hopefully have arrived in Black Heights. And we'll turn in this quest. And then we will uh, move on to... Going to bring your flare next? No, we're not going to bring your flare. We've got a new, we've got a new mission to go to, um, 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 Homermont. Possibly. You know what? We will find out tomorrow, and I'll get off this damn horse because it is chafing like a mother. My name is Leo, and I will see you next.